Ah, good evening. Good evening. I think we're here about on seven o'clock. We've got people logged in, which is always a good start. So uh, I'll give people a second longer and I will just do a bit of the introduction while uh, we wait just to see if uh, we get a few more uh, uh, latecomers just uh, joining us. Um, so good evening. Um, I hope you're all well. Um, I'm Peter Brook, uh, Development Officer for British Orienteering. And tonight we're going to be looking through some quick tips and advice for, uh, for clubs and for you to to help around the area of promotion, mainly through events, what keywords to use, how to make and get the right photos, and a few other pointers along the way. Um, the information I'm including uh, comes from a mix of personal experiences, research, uh, and original content from the longer webinar we did on communication in March. Uh, with a lot of valuable information from uh, Mike Shires at uh, Thames Valley. We've also got some uh, some great input from uh, Solway, who provided some um, notes via the publicity group uh, UK Orienteering, which helps to provide a good forum for getting tips and advice from other clubs and members, um, all on Facebook, and the link is currently on the screen at the moment. Um, the idea of these short webinar sessions is that they are just that, um, short and hopefully around 20 minutes to give you a chance uh, to quickly pick up a couple of useful tips uh, and ideas for your club. Um, obviously the longer sessions will go a bit more in depth. Um, I'll run through some things quickly, however you'll be able to access the recording uh, when you need to again should you wish to check back on anything uh, and as always we're always here to help you with more information. Um, I will carry on. <laughs> um, so if you're new uh, to these, um, you can ask questions using the question function. How to access uh, is on the screen now. Uh, if there is uh, any time at the end, I'll try and get through um, any questions. But if I don't, I will try and get back to you. Uh, well, I will get back to you separately, uh, anything specific. So what we're going to be looking at, uh, looking at some key points to focus on in publicity, how social media can help you, um, sourcing and creating some great club photos. Um, uh, and so a couple of other promotional channels um, and obviously the event follow-up as well. So as it says on there, the main aim is to give you some easy tips uh, to help you promote your club uh, and any events or activities uh, that you want to run. So let's get into the actual, uh, into the heart of it. So some words on there. So these tips as we go through, um, may see your club event, get new people, um, a number of new people, but don't presume that they'll become members straight away. Uh, this will not be a quick fix. Persistence uh, and setting in a foundation of awareness will help grow your club's presence. Um, raised awareness and hitting the right channels will see an increase in people attending your event. Uh, it's how you give them that great experience and have a strategy in place for when they turn up. Essentially, it's how you advertise the event and then how you promote the club when they're there. Um, so some golden rules to remember here, um, making sure any promotion you do um, if you stick to these five points and obviously the keywords of relevant, useful and interesting, uh, if you work to them, you won't go wrong. So have you got a great picture? Make sure you ask the right questions um, within any text or meeting people. I'll have a link to your website um, that's obviously updated. Keep it simple, short and sweet. Um, and to make sure um, before you promote your event as well, you know who you're targeting um, and what you want to achieve. Um, for example, if you want to um, aim at brand new families, then um, if you're using a very complicated woodland photo or a sprint athlete, is that going to be the most sensible to capture people in? They'll just skip straight past it. Um, and with this being a short webinar, I'm not going to go into detail on how you decide your focus as a club and the principles behind it. Um, you can look back on our webinar from March uh, this year where uh, we discussed it in much more detail. Uh, that's currently on uh, our British Orienteering's YouTube channel, um, or you can check out the direct link to go to the webinar through um, British Orienteering's uh, website and the webinar page. Um, from here, I'm presuming that you've already thought about who your target market is, um, have some events lined up, and now we're going to set about creating some publicity. So, publicity into action. I'm going to focus on the social media part. Okay. Um, so starting with the most crucial element is the photo, um, as the photo captures new people and we encourage them to click further. Um, the first thing is searching for that key photo. Now, looking at the slide and the images that we've got up at the minute, um, there may be good photos. However, if you're trying to appeal to a particularly new market, these photos don't really tell the story of you, your club, um, or who you're targeting. So it's just a bit of thought behind that. 
So your photo should reflect your target market, your target area, what, what do you want to achieve? What is your event about? Um, and good photos capture people to click through and read more. Um, your text then becomes secondary, which we'll, we'll look at in a moment. So take on what I've just said, these are some examples, some very targeted approach that come from Thames Valley, Sealock, um, South Yorkshire Orienteers. Um, and they don't don't take a lot of work. They 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 look so they they look impressive, but they don't take a lot of work. So instantly, when you look at these pictures now, you can see that the photos are more appealing, um, capturing the key information of the event, and you'll be able to pick up the target group yourself. Um, now, all of these have been created by people self-taught, um, me included. So the more you do, the better you'll get. I mean, don't worry, you're not going to get perfect first time certainly if I look at some of the photos I did beginning of the year to sort of now I, I've come a long way and that's just through sort of self talk and um, speaking to people like Mike Shires and, uh, and just getting tips about how things work and you pick up lots of things from lots of people and hopefully this will, will give you some good ideas as well of what you can do not every photo though needs to have text um, having text does help uh, and it'll be the as it'll be the first thing people see but if you're looking for photos to help attract the family market um, then these are good examples um, of what you can find um, so these are great to include on on flyers and posters um, and which will help uh, if you're looking at Facebook to accompany a headline photo so it might be as a um, a series of posts that are linked into your event which has got the big picture on uh, and these these types of pictures will would really help you appeal to the family market um, but this is just obviously one one area um, there's lots of obviously other areas I'm just using family as an example so you may have already set up the event with your big picture um, as I said these pictures will really uh, will support other posts that you could schedule in later Facebook um, does allow you to do that as well at the moment um, so we've seen some plain photos uh, and then some good examples of the text uh, and some other good examples, sorry, the text I'll come to on to in a minute. But how can you get them photos? Well, there's a couple of options. Obviously, it's having a bank of photos within the club. It's much better to have club photos of genuine parks you use um, that you can help uh, make a lot more relatable to people. Um, be careful also not to use too many club photos that might have come across a bit intimidating. So it might look like there's a bit of a, a club clique so to speak um, so just try and uh, avoid some of them because obviously you want to, to look really welcoming um, you can ask your development officer uh, ask everybody at uh, anybody at British Orienteer and if you've got a specific um, sort of idea of a photo you want but you can't find we're here to help or you can look on the internet uh, and this I'm going to show you a great way of being able to do this uh, yourself as well so I'm going to lose the image of me uh, and we'll just concentrate on uh, on the image, so we'll go straight on to uh, straight on to Google. So I'm going to run through a few things how you can access some photos um, and some other tips. Don't worry if you're trying to write these down in my steps. If I go a bit quick, um, they are on the slides as well, so you'll be able to watch the um, watch it backwards back afterwards, and you'll be able to take in the tips there. So we've got Google open. If you go to your top right. You've got images, so I click on to images. Looks a very similar window again, so I'm going to just put orienteering in. Uh, there we go, um, and then we automatically we've got some images up. So type what you're looking for, and they come up. Now this is the important bit. Uh, these photos not necessarily you're allowed to use uh, legally. So we click on tools, and then under tools you've got usage rights, and then if you go down to labeled for reuse. These are the free images you can use. Um, now, some of them you, you can get absolutely loads. They're great. Um, it can take a bit of searching and play around, um, but have a good look through. So, for example, if I look at click on map here, um, it gives me a lot of map options. The Lego one, I think, is really good. Um, but if I want to focus on sprint, you can see automatically I've got some sprint photos that I could open up and just save like I would usually. So, if I click on that one, all I've now do is, is right click and I can see it, save the image as I usually would. Um, that's it, you can have a play around. There's some great um, tools that way. Um, 
once you've got your picture, how can you bring it to life with some text? So there's a couple of different ways you can do this um, for whether that's Facebook or whether that is uh, you want to create some posters or flyers as well. I'm not sure how to use something called Canva. Um, so there's all sorts of things you can do here. I'm just going to quickly show you some templates. Now, this you get a 30 day free trial with this um, and you can download your designs and such free. Uh, and then afterwards, it, it doesn't cost a lot. To, it costs maybe a pound, two pounds to download a design that you've made. Um, all I've done here is click on templates. Just looking at a poster, for example. Um, and I will select event for argument's sake. And then here I could, I'll just pick pick this this one uh, for process of time. Um, I will use this template. As you get having a look around, obviously you'll get more familiar with it and, and have a play around. Um, but depending on your template, you could just go from plain and create your own, put pictures in there, all sorts. You could then alter your text here just by highlighting it and putting in, rechanging what you want. Um, and then all you do is download. Now I've already used my free trial, so if I wanted two images there, it was gonna cost me. But uh, you, you get the idea. Um, and then also another tool, um, if you've got your photos, is, I will uh, go through here, let me just type this up, is something called GIMP. Now this is a great tool for manipulating um, images. Um, uh, and adding text onto it as well. Now, it's a, there's a whole session of the different techniques that you can do on here. However, um, just for the purpose of this, I'll show you something which, um, just how you can add text onto photos. So I'll click into open, uh, already lined up. So if I click on here, I've got a family image that you might have seen earlier. Um, I'm just gonna open that. And I've got my image up. Now there's lots of different things here, but just essentially for here, for now, I'm just going to add some text. So I've clicked on the text tab there. I'm going to just put in uh, a text box here. And for example, I'm just going to put try orienteering. I see it comes up a bit small, but if I uh, double click it and then increase the size, you can play around. You can see it already coming on. That's a bit big. Let's knock that down. So I'll leave it in that. You can change your, um, your font. You can put italic on. You could then add another box up here. You could have a date on if I put this Saturday. You, you get the idea of what I'm, I'm doing. So it's really easy, really simple. You can already see, you can change your color. You can have a real play around with that. And this was a free software I was able to download. And, and then all I do to be able to use that, save, <coughs> save that into my computer, Ironically, I don't use save or save as. <coughs> Sorry, I use export. So I click export into here. The folder um, I've selected already, so it's my pictures on my computer. And then I just, uh, family orienteering, I'll call it family 10. I click to export. Export again. And that has now saved onto my laptop. So I've done that image. I can then use that image where I would like, whether I use it on Facebook, um, use it to create a poster. I, I can do what I want, but I can play around with it. So there's just some ideas there. Um, if you don't want to use that, you can use Word by inserting an image onto a blank Word document, using text, uh, text box over the image, making the text box have no background or border, and then choosing the font style color, um, as you would do back in school. Um, and this is just, then you just screen grab the final image. You can crop it and paint and save it. So there's another route there. But there's, there's different ways when you can have a look around and I'm sure there's others out and about there as well. Um, now you've got your photos, so how do you use them? So creating events on Facebook are certainly another um, great way to, uh, to engage with people. So I've got C-Locks up here at the moment. Um, most people, well, there's a lot of people are getting very familiar with seeing lots and lots more um, events, uh, club events being created on Facebook. You can see I've already got an event here um, lined up, which I will refer back to shortly. Um, but just to recap on creating an event, you add your photos uh, into the top 
and then you've got your name you can add your location which you can tag in which is always uh, really useful put in a full description good description certainly check out other clubs for some examples uh, like Thames Valley Sea Lock there's lots of other clubs with some really good examples um, which you could use um, their frameworks um, there's, there's some really good stuff out there um, then you've got the obviously start and end dates co-host if you're at a cafe at a park have they got um, a Facebook page you can tag in and then you'll appear on theirs as well um, so there's some good stuff add your website on there um, certainly inside interesting on that I'll just close that for a minute. Another one, uh, just to highlight Thames Valley at the minute coming up. Um, this is spooky orienteering. I thought this was really good when I was having a look uh, around the internet earlier. Um, really good image capturing, you've got the orienteering uh, man uh, running through, but at the same time, you've got, you've got really good detail about what it's about. I really like how they've, they've themed the different courses and things. Just a different spin. It'll engage people, it'll capture people in, and that's what we're really looking for. So I'll make an appearance back. Um, and then looking at some sort of keywords. So I said I'll just have a quick, uh, everything is on the slide. So just reflecting back to what was on Google, um, that was how I found the pictures through them steps well you're not on for a second longer if you want to reflect back then obviously you'll be able to watch this back later on um bring your photos to life there are a couple of the the steps i've just run through on that front as well and then create a new event on facebook there's just a quick recap there and just have a look at some keywords um you see all sorts of different it's like how do you start your your post and i always struggle because i always try and use too many words um but trying to cut things down it is important um, that you try and get that hook in so it's what people want to read it'll get them to read on um, and opening something like our orienteering club is running an event this saturday it is not going to really capture people in so instead try doing something starting off with some of these phrases for example don't miss out learn to as, as research has proved um, that it, it will work uh, and popular um, I've added a quick line at the bottom. It's too wordy, but you get the it'll, it'll give you the idea of what we're looking at um, and what we're trying to uh, trying to say. A couple of extra things when trying to remember as well with the posts um, is to link in with other fam with other groups, so family groups, runners, days out in your local area, and um, things to do. There's all sorts of different things um that are obviously really useful keep a list of the groups that you've done so it's it's easy and you don't forget next time and you can just grow it as you discover more um, use the app to link your event uh into a post um, and then like and follow lots of other groups as well so that you can start sharing it across um, now i'm going to also show you about um sponsored posts on facebook we'll give you a quick look on that many clubs are spending small amounts promoting specific events so i'll just show you some put you some stats up there um mike shires at uh, thames valley has created a great handout as well which is attached to this presentation um which will allow you to read more in your own time so using an example from sealock this year each event of the saturday series has had 30 pounds spent to promote it for 10 days prior beforehand uh, and this paid promotion has hit over ten and a half thousand people um, of which 10% of that has engaged with the advert. Now these are just on the screen at the moment is just three um, three examples of, of how many people it reached and how many people engaged with it. And you, you can see there's a variety depending on what it is. Did we get the image right? In, in some cases, we're, we're learning all the time. Um, but you could create that uh, and there's, obviously it's a really big reach and the more people you reach, the more people that you can potentially convert into coming to your events and ultimately members um you could also link in um incentives for those that come along as well so you could say quote facebook ad and you give them a pound off the run and um, see lots of event day numbers of um this year have over doubled through the effort great effort of the volunteers um, and the members within the club to really push it forward so that's been a real benefit for them this year but it's a long-term project as well and um, so I'll quickly go on to trying to show a sponsored post 
Uh, I'll go back onto Circuit at the minute if I go back onto the home. Um, so this will just give you an idea about um, if you've not created a sponsored post before as well, how you can do it. So let's um, do something really quick and simple. Learn to orienteer um, at, now this is where we put in the event. So the event one I mentioned uh, a little bit ago, uh, the event that was already put in there. So it's called orienteering, not just a walk in the park. Now I will just take my camera off so I'm not going to distract you too much when I'm looking at a different screen um, but learn to orienteer at and I'll put orienteering you can start to see other things pop up like publicity group UK orienteering give it a look uh, but as you start to type in options will come in um, but there we go not just a walk in the park has now appeared so that's put there I can attach photos to it if I want um, but we're talking about boosting at the moment. So if I go into boost, uh, I'd like to create a new audience. I put my title, let me just call it Manchester for now. That's about it right. Um, gender, generally you're going to appeal to everybody. Um, age, you can play around with that if you wish and look at your location here. So I'm just going to put Manchester for argument's sake. That comes up now it's 40 kilometers radius i think that's a bit much again argument's sake i'm just putting 20 and enter and then we have a an area then in the box underneath we can start to browse different demographics interests so that way parents is always a good one to include all parents I'll just click all suggestions will come up well-being quality of life married personal development outdoor enthusiast you there's the list is endless so you can play around with this quite significantly so i would then save it that's saved in there click my duration end date how much i want to spend and then arrange your payment really straightforward conscious time so i will keep going nearly at the end here um Obviously, all the other communication, ensuring use of um, appropriate use of direct emails. Um, I'll click back on here as well. Um, the question to ask is, does your club, as a matter of course, send out an inviting email to all members a week before? Is it in your newsletter? Do you send anything out or do you just rely on them to check um, themselves? Um, we've been running some uh, club surveys um, across the country. Uh, and from that, it's shown that 55% of members aged between uh, 26 and 45 that have attended events uh, and completed the survey actually prefer an email communication in the week prior. Um, so that was really interesting to read. Uh, and obviously, you need to try and capture the data um, from people, new people that are attending your event. Make sure, obviously, you keep it in line with uh, GDPR um to get their permission to uh, to email them but again you could you tailor something specific uh, your communication out to them um and also um you then have the follow-up so you've got to ask yourself this what are you going to do when all these new people turn up um the promotion is one thing is how you capture them afterwards so the the meet and greet and the smiling the welcome back once they've completed the run word of mouth to future events. I, what is your unique selling point? If you were going into an event and you know you've heavily publicized it, have you spoke to your the team that are gonna be there on the day of volunteers to say, right, if any new people come, these are like three things about the club we really wanna push, um, and what could they be? You might have a club night, uh, it might be the next event, just what makes your club great, uh, and really sell that. Um, and obviously ask them about how they found out about your event so that you can keep doing that channel as well. Um, and also, do you, what materials do you have that you could sell the club on? Try not to date them so that you can use them long term as well. But anything new that you can give to new people which sells your club um, and tells them what you're about. Uh, doesn't need to be long, but just gives them enough information. Uh, and then the following is, how do you take what you've learned and take it forward? Um, so some very quick um, quick information here and I'll just keen to learn more development conference plug here as well um, national development conference uh, beginning of January um, where there'll be a session a lot more in depth than I've quickly run through tonight but hopefully I've given you some different tips 
Um, and so there'll be plenty there. Um, a lot more in depth and really useful, some uh, stuff that's going to be discussed there. Um, and like I said at the beginning, the idea of these short webinar sessions is that they are just that um, short, give you the chance to quickly pick up a couple of useful tips and ideas. Um, so that was a whistle stop tour. I have gone slightly over, but hopefully it is still quite uh, short. So obviously, if you do want to uh, ask me any questions, um, available now, or do just send us uh, send us an email, and uh, I will follow up and uh, get back in touch with you in the next couple of days um, with an answer. But by all means, our development officers are all there as well to help you as well. So if you've got a particular issue you're looking for that you want some support, get in touch with us. And, um, and we'll give you that help. Thank you for listening and uh, have a good evening and we'll see you again soon.